Yo, what it do? We back at it again, man. You know what it is, man. It's the voice of the culture, man. And we live today, man. We out in Kearney, New Jersey at a different type of location, man. We in the Sesh house. Yeah. And, yeah. man, this place right here is just a place that right now is is coming of age. It's, mm -hmm. it's definitely a, a plant base for a lot of great up-and-coming artists, entrepreneurs. And I got a great young artist with me today, man, for my town, Inglewood. You know what I mean? He's an artist. He's 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 a little bit of everything, man. I got to give you your flowers first and foremost and say, you know what? Thank you for the opportunity, King. Thank you. Man, I've been studying. I've been uh, researching. I kind of sat back and I observed what you were doing, man. I had to I had to reach out, man. So Appreciate it. Thank you for just putting on for Inglewood. Word. Hell yeah. yeah. I, I got I to gotta give you your flowers on that because yeah. I know everything you do is for the culture, but also yeah. for where your community and where you stand by. So Absolutely. thank you for that, man. But for those that don't know you, man, give them a small introduction of yourself. Okay. Let's just tap in, man. Uh, my name is Jaws. I'm from Englewood, and I'm the painting MC. Ha. Yeah. Painting MC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which, let's start off with this one, though. At what time and what era in your life did you know who you was. Uh, I feel like I've always known who I was, but you know, society will help condition you into other versions of yourself. Exactly. In order to kind of survive or fit in. Um, but you know, I've always kind of been a rebel. Without a cause. So with a cause, but without a cause, you know. Where, what I'm either saying? way. Right. Right. And um I think eventually I had no choice but to like kind of fall a hundred percent into who I was, um, you know, cause me selling, I used to sell cars, me working 60 hours a week, selling cars and shit, that wasn't me, you know what I mean? And I felt that like, you feel like the, the distance between who you want to be or who you truly are and the life that you're living. Um, okay. And it'll feel like resistance all the time. And then, like now I wake up and I'm good. And you're free. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing I, you know, I really noticed that about you. You have a sense of your element, your aura is free. It's, 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 yo, this is who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm going. But as a young man growing up in Inglewood, man, your style was a little different than the average. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I asked you, you know, when we started this off to kind of jump back in to that time because I need the mm. culture to understand it's okay to be you. We live in a society right now where everybody wants to fit in. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you growing up, you always, like, even when we talk prior, you always say, yo, you just had your own. Was that a struggle at one point? Because it was like, you know, I'm the in Inglewood. I'm not exactly the typical Inglewood kid that yeah. we would think of. Yeah. It was a struggle. I mean, it, it is a constant struggle to fight for your right to be yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like most people don't even fight, so they fall in line. So I think the, the war is never over. Okay. Or, it's just constantly keep going. It's just levels to it. Yeah, you kind of, you always, no matter what you do, however, like new spaces that you move into, you always kind of got to fight for your right to express yourself in that space. Right. Whenever you have an idea for something, you know, no one's supposed to just believe in you 100%. That's just bad business, right? right. You kind of got to show and prove. So I just feel like just for doing shit for free, you know, and just doing it all the time and almost like doing it, you know, without even thinking about it, I think like, that's what art and music was for me. So I was just able to get in those spaces and just, I don't, it, it's different. With art, I was more comfortable over time. With. So what came first though? The music or the art? For you? Uh, like what did I start doing first? Yeah, what was the first love? Oh, it's, it's definitely, okay. So my art is my gift. Okay. That's how I like, you know when they say everyone has a gift that you're supposed to utilize? Art's my gift. My love is music. Okay. So like I love music so much. All like, drama, all, all everything too. Yeah, like with with art, I knew that I was good at it and I kind of used it as a tool. So I use my art as a tool to get things I want in the world. Okay. And with music, I use that as an expression of myself and kind of like a, a record of my mind. Mm. So I can even listen to songs I did when I was 19 
and see what I was thinking like at that or time. give myself courage in the future for the way I used to think, okay. you know, or remind myself who I am. Mm. So in that blueprint, I always have my core self. Okay. So that's what my music is for me. When did you start painting? When did you start drawing first? Uh, when you started drawing first? I started drawing in, in elementary school that I can remember. And even going back to just like fitting in, like I was telling you about, it was like, you know, I look different, I talk different, I dress different. And, but that I was like- my choice though. No, nah, well, it's just cultural wise. I feel like when I was in elementary school, I didn't know a lot of Caribbean kids. Okay. So my mom is Indian, she's from Guyana. Okay. And then she grew up in Manhattan. Okay. So, uh, you know, my mom has a different culture about her. All right. And then, you know, when I, you know, she dressed, she dressed me for school or whatever, you know, I was like, almost look like, uh, I don't know, like kind of like an Oxford look, like a preppy look. Cause right. you know, in the Caribbean, they dress all their kids up in button ups and that's, shit like that's that. their culture. Exactly. So it was only when I started to see more like kids come from the Caribbean and shit like that and see that their parents did the same thing to them. And, and you know, like they kind of assimilated that way. You but, knew the group that you were in. Exactly. My sister is the one that kind of gave me a lot of like culture, like American culture. Okay. You know, like- She's older than you. Yeah, six years older than me. And uh, she was like a popular kid. She grew up in Teaneck. And um, she like put me on to like, you know, hip. She took me to my first hip hop show. Right. And it was Dipset. And it was at the Apollo Theater. And so that was a whole nother- That was my first rap concert. Okay. And that shit, it blew my mind because that's when they had that song "Dip Set, Dip Set." Yeah. Right, and they I just the wave I is crazy. I never too. heard the song. Oh, okay. So I go there, and then I see the whole place stand up, and everyone's just getting crazy. And I was like, "Whoa, this is cool," you know. So I think that's when I like I was like, "Yo, I would do this," you know. Subconsciously, I didn't start writing or making music till like much later, but that was one of the things that was like. So your first real opening up the introduction to music was the dips to hip hop to hip hop yeah so I, prior to that what was you you know what was your you know what was your core music what was you listening to uh i listened to all right so growing up my mom listened to a lot of like house and dance music right so like ktu okay. and all that and uh she listened to indian music and i think that when i started getting into skateboarding like the punk rock and the alternative rock was there. So I started listening to that. And then, you know, gradually started like listening to more and more hip hop. It just started becoming part of all the culture. Like a salad, it became a salad. Yeah, food. absolutely, absolutely. And then I was just surrounded by musicians um, all the time that made like hip hop music. So I just picked it up, you know? It was nothing that I really said, oh, I wanna really do this or, it wasn't like, yo, this is my way out. This is, it wasn't, it wasn't a way of, yo, this is going to be my way out. Yeah, no, I, I, I never thought of it like that. I never thought about trying to find a way out either, like to get away. I kind of always knew like, if you want money, you're not going to go make music, you know? Like, that's not the money route. Because I'd been surrounded, I'm in Englewood. Like, I'm surrounded by so much money. Exactly. There's a millionaire off socks, like, probably walking around town, you know? Right. So like, I just, and I knew the money was there, but um, I never like looked at music for that type of opportunity. I think you more just had the love. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I, when I first started, when I first got the iPod, uh, was it an iPod? Yeah, an iPod. I listened to music nonstop, Kazaa, LimeWire. I never downloaded any of that. But um, like that really put me onto music. And I had a friend that was older than me. He was from Texas. And he like rapped and he was really good at freestyling. And he used to go to all the competitions and stuff. And I remember he used to have like a stack of papers with all his bars and shit. And one day he just gave them, gave one to me. He was like, yo, you can use this. And I was like, I'm not gonna use this, this guy. He was talking about some other shit, you know? Right, and that's not but, even who you were. Exactly. Um, but he's, well, I studied it. Okay. I studied that 16, I studied that that formula for rhyme, you know? And then I started writing my own stuff. I remember I wrote one of my first raps is a Mario rap. 
about Super Mario. And I did it on a, like a, a Mario beat from like SoundClick or something like that. Yeah, but that was all about the creativity. Where? Where not? Where not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like that's what made you. Now, I'm, I'm not even going to say different. I don't want to use the word different. Mm. I hate to use using that word because we get caught up in what's different. What's di what is it? Really, no such thing as different. It's really what you intend to do with yourself. Mm. You have an idea, I have an idea. Mm. We have two different ideas, mm. but it can also take us to the same destination. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. think people don't understand that. So with you growing up mm. in Inglewood, mm. having that different culture background, because it's not too many ethnic groups coming to the Bergen County area, mm. you know what I mean? And then they do, they don't really migrate with the locals. They kind of stay to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you and your mother were very close. I can, I, I'm sure you were. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? Your pops, what about his background? Uh, my dad is from Africa. Okay. Um, But he, I didn't grow up with him. Okay. I didn't grow up with him. Okay. Uh, your that, sister? Uh, She is same father different mother okay so but she's cuban and african so how did that culture difference come about oh it was good i wish my sister taught me spanish you know because she spoke spanish but uh she didn't teach me that <laughs> <laughs> she taught me a whole bunch of other shit though. she didn't teach you that yeah so now we we, we growing life is becoming we doing concerts mm. you know what i mean what age did you start to take your your painting series now because we're skipping from drawing to painting now. Yeah, painting is more recent than drawing. So drawing was like forever. Yeah, forever. As long as I can remember, my babysitter was drawing perfectly, and I think that inspired me too because she used to draw like Power Rangers for me, like perfect, like look just like it. And my mom's like a she's a cosmetologist, so she's a painter, you know. But she paints. Like, she's an old artist. Stuff. Exactly. A lot of the people on my mom's side of the family are all some type of artists. So I know it, the creative side is like right there. So that's just always been in your kind of your DNA, that Absolutely. creative aspect. Absolutely. And my sister is an artist too, but she's more performance. She the performs dance. theater and stuff like okay. that. Yeah, word up. So you, you basically got a whole little mixture of everything going on. Like you said, I got a lot going on. So you keep that creative insight around you at all times. Yeah. So let me ask you this, <laughs> your motivation. <sighs> My motivation. Uh, okay, so I want to do something that people enjoy. So I want to- Well, let's start, happy. let's start over. From the beginning, what mm. was the motivation with the paintings? With the painting specifically. Your drawings became paintings, but what motivated you to say, you know what, I'm going to stay in this lane. Oh, okay. You know so, what I mean? Because sometimes we start something as, as, as young, you know, young young individuals. I, oh, I can tell you. We kind of skip. Yeah, I sh I'll show you. So from elementary school to high school, I was drawing. Okay. Right? Just, I really stuck to pen and pen, pen and pencil, my bad. And when I got to high school, no one really drew anime like that. Like I, that's what I started drawing, you know, okay. Dragon Ball with all my friends and stuff, you know, RIP to Kira Toriyama. And um, when I got to high school, nobody was drawing and I used to draw with my friends. And when going into high school, my friends made music. So then I stopped really drawing so much and then really just went into music. I used okay. the same formula that I learned to draw to learn music, right? And I just stuck with the music for so many years. I would always draw in between here and there, you know? You always it was, kept it because yeah. it was a part of you. It comes natural too. But it changed when I started hanging with graffiti artists. Mm -hmm. So I started chilling with graffiti artists and not only did I learn how to spray, but they were painting. They were doing oil paints and all types of digital art, you know, with any type of medium. So I was just like, whoa, I thought you guys were just hitting walls and stuff like that. And that like, like turned me out to painting and stuff like that. And um, it was from there that I started, this is one of my old pieces too. Let's bring it up. Let's bring one of the pieces up. Bro. All right, so this is one of like the first pieces I did of the style. So this is like my popular like Annie Pop. Uh, what painting. year was this? This is fire too. Uh, Let's talk about this a little bit, please. Well, this is not even signed on the back or dated, but I think this is 2017 or 18. 
So you could tell my old paintings because they're just the heads. Okay. But what I did here is I cut pages out of the actual manga and I glued it on there. And on the then, canvas. Yeah, on the canvas. And then I just waited for it to dry like a day or two and then I painted over it. And this was like freehand. Like a lot of my pieces now have references. Uh, but I just drew this off the top of my head because I had been drawing Vegeta since elementary school. So I knew what he looked like. So right. I just, you know, I just freehanded it. And um, and yeah, this became people started liking it and then people want to buy it. So I was like, yo, I'm on to something. So I just went hard with it and I kept doing these. And uh, and here I am. Yeah. Well, my 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 question is, it takes dedication. Mm. It takes patience. Mm. But it also takes space because you just can't be in any type of space putting these things together. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah. So your mind space is different from you putting down some lyrics. Mm. If we're not writing bars, mm. we're making a, let's just say, a, a, I'm going to call it a, a mirror. Okay. Because it's a reflection of something else that you saw. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where's your mind space at? Because you can't be dealing with drama, negativity, and all mm. that. Because it's just like cooking. You Everything we do, you do with passion and you do with love. None of my paintings I do angry. Thank I you. don't do any of my paintings angry. If my mood is messed up, I'll stop if I'm doing something. And I try to be... Because I've, I've painted before and I know... The difference. I know that you put your emotions and your intentions in your creations. So I think it's very important to be in the right space. If not, you're going to push out your feelings, which is good sometimes with art. You know, sometimes you right. can paint when you're angry and that frustration will be in there. And someone will see that and be like, I'm frustrated too. I'm sorry, I like this, you know? And, but I don't want to sell that. I don't want to sell pain. I think, I, I think music is a lot of pain. Music, mm -hmm. you sell pain to people. So art, you feel like, when you're being in your art zone, it's yeah. more like I want to bring creativity, joy, yeah. appreciation. Yeah, it's your appreciation big time. Okay. Because a lot of these pieces I do are nostalgic for, and they do have, you know, they have those elements of uh, adversity to them. And it does remind me of my like childhood, you know? And uh, yeah. Let's talk about the second piece you got with the full frame, though. Because right. you're not, this is not just the head. Yeah, that's a little later. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a little later. Let's, let's talk about that because right. this also shows your growth. You know what I mean? Right. Let's, let's talk about the growth of this because you use the same concept, yeah. which is fire. Yeah. Which I, I really believe that was thinking outside of the box, too. I, so before we get into that, what okay. made you go ahead and do the glue with the what made you do that instead of regular canvas? I tell you. So I had this friend and he's um he's like this, he's this rich kid. And he was telling me that his homie is selling paintings for tens of thousands and he's got the studio in New York, that's the whole floor, and he's da 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 da. And I'm looking and he's showing me, he's like, yeah, he takes like nostalgic papers and stuff. Like I've seen him do like, uh, you know, Bible pieces and, you know, uh, old, like, newspaper stuff. And, I, and then I started seeing that style. I was like, how come nobody's doing that with manga? Right? So I just did that. And like, I was just like, let me try it. And then and I've seen other people do it, but only in passing. Like, nobody said, like, this is the style that I'm known for. Right. So I think that when I started doing this more and more, like there's been people on Instagram that have totally ripped apart another artist for doing that. And been like, yo, you're stealing this guy's style, da 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 da. So like when I get to those points, then I know like I'm known for this style. Right. So I you want your own certain yeah, stamp. Yeah. In the game. Oh that okay, that's I see that when I see that, I know yeah. what it is. It's like other people can do the style, but like who's known for it or becoming popular for it or like using it in such a, a big way, a great right. way. So I think that's what I've been doing with it. And I paint all different types of ways. Uh, not to cut you off, yeah. but I'm not going to lie. I found this to be very, for me, it was very old school mm -hmm. and hear me out. Okay. I'm a little bit older than you. When I was a kid growing up, my mom's 
when we had birthday parties, sometimes what she would do is use the comics out the paper. To wrap the presents? Wrap the presents, but also put on the table. Oh, shit. That's so cool. she did the comics, took the comics and put them on the table. And that was like our little, you know, birthday, you know, instead of buying the thing for the, yeah. that was her way. So when uh, I saw this, the background, it took me back to my childhood. That's dope. That's you know what dope. I mean? Because I come from an era of, I read the, when I read certain, like these, th these backdrops was in the newspapers. Mm. This was in the record. This mm. is how I read Charlie Brown. This is yeah. how I saw the peanut gang. This yeah, is how yeah, I yeah. saw... The, I forgot the guy name who you the army guy the mass group. Oh, you know okay. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. So these and when I saw it, I was like, "Wow!" It took me back there mm. to my childhood. Where? So for you to do that and then come on, like this, this is like come on. This is Thank time. You, this is Thank patience. You. This is essence. This is it. I, Yo, it goes back into appreciation, man. I just love it, you know. And every time I do one of these pieces, like my love for it just comes out, you know, it does. You ever do anything on clothes? Yeah, absolutely. Most of the clothes that I, I'm not wearing any of my clothes now, but most of my pants and my shirts, I made them. Let's talk about your look. All right. Because I feel like you own it. Word, okay. And yeah. I say that with respect. Word, word. Because I don't feel like you striving to be different. I feel mm. like you're just being you. Where? Yeah, I, I you know was, what I mean because it's like some people, you know, we live in society mm -hmm. in times where image, yeah, absolutely, look, fit yeah. in, yeah, 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 down, accepted, yeah. You're yeah. not with none of that. I, to an extent, I am. Okay. I know that when I do business or I make first impressions, it matters. I think, but key word, you're doing business. You're yeah. not doing it to be down. No, 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 no. no it's no, a no. difference. Okay, it's, okay. it's a difference of. I want to be accepted mm. by those over there because I'm over here in this corner. Oh, I, That's not what you're doing. Anymore. I think that when I was younger and I was more into my culture here, you know, American culture, like I did do things that I thought were, I, when I was searching for expressions mm. of self. Right. Let's you know, I, I like would that try, I, I would, like that I would try stuff, you know, I would like fit in or. You know, remember the everyone was getting the we was wearing baggy jeans and everyone switched to skinny jeans. I did not like skinny jeans, man. I hated them. But eventually, like you know, I just said, all right, I'm gonna just fuck with them. But now I wear all types of pants. Right, you're not closed minded because you yeah. you you. I feel like you're free. Where I feel like your energy and your spirit is very free. That's why I love your style because okay. your style is yo is your style is very. I'm gonna say this with respect, graceful. Okay. You know what I mean? Your presence, your aura. Like, you got some people, uh, you're very laid back, mm. easy going to talk to. Right. Your style is, I'm blessed, I'm comfortable, yeah. but I know who I am. Mm. And I feel like with your paintings, I never heard your music, so I always have to refer to the paintings because I okay. didn't hear the music. Okay, okay. All due respect. That's you know good. I, mean? I like that. You know what I mean? I feel like your paintings represent your structure. Mm. Okay. When I looked at those two, and I mind you, I've saw paintings on your IG, mm. I've saw those, and I'm like, that's structure to me. Mm. It, it wasn't just an idea, it was mm. structured. Mm. Now, a lot of people don't understand what structure mean, what I mean by that, so I'm gonna break it down. Structure saying, okay, I'm gonna have a plan, but with no idea. Oh, okay, I, that's like, that's improv. Right. Yeah, that's like 99% of this stuff is like that. But a lot of yeah. people don't want to do that. They want to go bop, 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 bop. Because there's no security in improv. Thank it's kind that's of That's what like, I was looking yeah, for. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, you're taking a risk, you know, every time you do it. Like, when I paint, like, no one's going to notice when I make a mistake because they're only going to see the, the finished product. We should but see I, the billion mistakes yeah. that you made before the product is finished. But I know that's how everything is. It's the same thing with music. You know, you might be like, I don't like the way I said and. No one's gonna notice that. But no. the guy behind the booth be like, yo, Ja, that was it. Keep yeah. that. And you like, nah, you gotta go with that. Not me. I know. And then and sometimes you gotta do that when someone tells you, yo, that's the one. But you it's it be yourself getting in your own way. Is that a gift and the curse of the game? I think when you create anything, uh -huh. the only thought, okay, when you create, and especially if you're creating out of love, the only other thought you can have is fear. So if you do second guess your creation, then you're just adding fear to it. That's the that's the natural. Is this good enough? Is this 
going to work? Is this going to be accepted? Is this, you know, so like, those are not good thoughts. Those are just like thoughts to get in your way. And everyone has those thoughts when they do anything. So it's just about moving past it or just having the right amount of not giving a fuck, you know, mm. and just getting through it. And then you appreciate it later. Like I don't critique my paintings until I finish. Once I finished it, then I can appreciate it. But if I try to appreciate it or critique it while I'm doing it, it will never get done. It can, it can be intimidating. You know, I feel like that's why a lot of people don't put out their art, whether it's art or music, you know, they're like intimidated. They intimidated themselves, you know? So I guess basically this expression that I've always said is two type of things in this world is love and it's fear. You can relate to that. Absolutely. I, those are the two things that kind of conquer everything. You either work, work either walking in love mm -hmm. or you're walking in fear. So that's, well, I try and walk with them both. So my mm. name, Jaws is a master of polarity or, you know, God, God of duality. Okay. And um, the Z in my name is for zebra and it's for the, the stripes on it, black and white and the polarities and duality and that. So uh, I know like you can't be all good and you can't be all bad, but you can live with both of them and you balance it and balance it, you know, and not run away from like your fears, but kind of embrace them in a loving way. You know what I mean? So real shit. Word. Dope. I like that. Word. And that's all of this. That's my whole lifestyle. My shit is very uncertain. It's like an uncertainty in it. There's no structure. You know, even though you said, I think that's like more of intent when I create. It's like an intention of, you know, I see it before I create it. And all I'm doing is just getting out the emotion or getting out the idea you know and then it's for somebody else because it isn't for me because i'm just looking at myself you know what i mean in this case with the art so is it pressure but being that it's not is it pressure in the art being that it's not for you no there, okay there's no pressure in it um i do it because i love it but i try not to get attached to my pieces because if you work on something for three weeks you know, and you love it and you give it away right away, like it hurts, you know? Right. So, you know, I have to deal with that, that loss every time I create something. But with, with my music, I'm never giving away something permanently. You know what I mean? I have it digital and, you know, I can share it with everybody, you know? And it's really, like I said, it's really for myself. It's really like time stamping. It's really uh, capturing. Both. Capturing my ideology. And, it it yeah. shows you your growth in the time and the era mm -hmm. where you was at mentally, spiritually. Yes. Physically. It does. Financially. And I love that because when I was when I was in college and I started putting out my tapes and where stuff. Where'd you go to school at? At William Patterson University. Okay. Um, I got a computer and I started recording like by myself more. Uh, not necessarily with the with my crew and at a studio and shit. And, um, you know, that allowed me just a whole bunch of freedom, recording isolated by yourself, you know, and just writing to yourself. Did you produce music as well? So I grew up around producers and um, I never, you know, dabbed into that like they did. Like right. they had favorite producers. They, you know, they were listening to different stuff. I was more into the writing. So you know? bars... Yeah. Now we talk. Let's so the culture can understand a little bit. You talk about your music. What music exactly were you doing? You was a hip hop artist, like oh well. This kind of ties into to to me too. Like um, it was all genres of music. Okay. I think that's everyone knew my crew for doing pop, rock, hip hop, house, anything. We did no ceiling R and B. Yeah, because well, the way we were taught to make music, you know. Because we had like industry stuff like early. I started making mainstream music first. Okay. Like I didn't, I, and then just falling in love with that, you know, I, I had to, all right, let me, let me go study this. Let me go look further back and, you know, hone my skills or my taste. And, you know, I started learning more about hip hop and the roots and all of that stuff and, you know, getting into the creation of it or the inspiration of it. And, uh, 
you know, that changed up. But uh, we always made all all genres of music. That's dope because yeah. a lot of brothers get so caught up in one, like we, and we talked about this. You get caught up in one box. Yeah. I'm just cool with this. I'm just cool with the strawberry candy. I don't want no other candy. I don't want no yeah. other flavor. Yeah. And I feel like that limits you to being a great, a great artist. Absolutely. I mean, not that you couldn't learn, you know, through that one channel. You couldn't learn about life through the one channel you chose. But it does help to have a variety of channels of expression. I, I feel like personally, yes. and this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not an artist. I'm not an MC. I'm not a, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you, and you being around other artists on different levels, graffiti artists, music artists, producers, mm -hmm. I feel like and this is something that I've always kind of been strong on for my pops. You always have to have a broad and a horizon for life. It's no yeah. just one. I'm going down this road and I'm not taking the right. I'm not taking the left. Mm. I don't want to see what's on the other side. I just want to go on this path. And I feel like that is only limiting you to be great. Because in order to be great, you have to have knowledge and wisdom of multiple things and an understanding of this. It's like... I hate, I'm gonna use this word, forgive me, but I hate like the religious certain thing. Oh, I'm this. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just this. Yeah. And then they beat you down with this, this, when you're really, you can study a little bit of everything. You can study the Quran, you can study, it's all the word of God. I feel like as you grow spiritually, naturally, you're gonna want to study other things. Thank you, but we get so caught up in, nah, you can't, let's just stay here. Well, that tells you what they're really into. It's more of identity than information. You know, they don't want to grow. They want to be accepted or, wow. you know, fit in. Like, I like that identity. Yeah. Repeat that again, no? I don't know. It's all like, I don't know what I said. The identity <laughs> stuff. I, that, the, I, the whole identity, I like right. that because society is captivated off of identity right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Absolutely. People I mean, are starving to have identity. People, I don't even know who they are. That's how we survive. It's hard. I don't think that we're supposed to live in such a heavily social environment like this. And I feel like so many humans aren't built to be like social. So they just want to fit in. So it's just about, you know, looking good enough for your parents or your peers or your coworkers and just like moving around so they're comfortable, you know? Um, but you know, I was a lot of people that just not to cut you off. Yeah, can walk into a room and light it up. Yeah. and you know that because you've been in a lot of rooms. Word, absolutely. But then they also go home, and they're in the darkest space of their life. Yeah, word. It goes like that for a lot of people. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I thought I feel and I know that personally because I've had those conversations with individuals like, "Ah, huh, you you really dealing with that?" Mm. And you don't know that because their aura, when they walk through that door, mm. it's like, but when they close that door, it goes back to looking in that mirror at night, identifying who you are. Yeah, that's a, that takes a lot of strength if you're going to put up facades about your the way you feel and stuff like that and be able to, to go back and then reflect on yourself and be happy. It's really about being happy with yourselves, you know? I couldn't look at myself every day putting on my suit and tie and going to sell cars, you know? I couldn't look at myself, I couldn't deal with it. It is a lot of stuff I kind of stepped away from because I couldn't imagine, you know, keeping up the... So basically you was like, yo, I'm tired of the bullshit. Like, this is not me. Well, I noticed that all these people that set up my society, a little bit of them know what's, what's good. They don't even care. They're really just set on control and, you know, assimilation or building something for them. So I was like, you know, what's the point of following the structure that society has put? You know, we everyone lives their whole life and then they're like, oh, I should have did this, I should have did that. And I think that was one of the big things that they told the 90s kids. Like, yeah, that, that goes back to what we just said, bop, bop, A, B, you gotta do A, B, C, D to get the E. Yeah. You just can't jump from A to B, I mean A to E, it doesn't happen. And I believe in life that that does happen. Yeah, I believe. I'm sorry. Yeah. It can happen. I, I've seen it. Yeah. I'm I'm an example of right. it too. Because I don't believe in those type of barriers. I know that I can go, if I go in the right room, it's over. You know, if I get around the right people, it's over. I could, 
get whatever I want from the situation that I need. So it's all about like creating those opportunities for yourself and then acting on them. Shit. Now you say creating opportunities. Mm. A lot of people are scared to create their own opportunities for themselves, but they'll do something for somebody else to create. Yeah, uh, that's not bad. I mean, I, they're you know they're not strong enough, or then they don't have the mindset to do it. You know, if they're able to help, I think that's doing something positive. You know? I respect that. I respect your answer. That's why I said it. Me personally, I feel like, and this is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. And this is why I brought it up to you because I love the I, I love the way you view things. You view things on a very short angle, which is cool. Okay. Um, people get caught up fear. We talked about fear. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like fear is a sign of weakness, and sometimes we throw it on other people. We throw our fears on other people. Yeah. So I can't do this. So I'm gonna get Ja to do it. Oh. And then I'm going to see if Ja can do it. And if Ja does it, mm. then I know I was right. Oh, yeah. I guess people do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My thing is that I can't respect that because you're weak to me. Yeah. It, because now you're trying to fish to see if I'm going to fail, if the idea was a fail or success. But at the end of the day, there's no idea that's a fail or success when it's your idea. Mm, I feel that. And you know what I'm saying? If you know that you are capable or you have, you're gravitating towards something. Thank you. I feel like you should do it. You shouldn't really be afraid or try to get other people to test the waters out for you because you're not going to get the same results. That's like a person can say, yo, my man, that shit is whack. And I'm sitting there saying, yo, that shit is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not sitting there saying, you might say, well, damn, he said it was whack, but Sha said it was fire. That's a numbers game, man. Thank you. Like, Half people are going to like it, half people are going to like it. And you're cool when you accept that. All I got to do is find the people that like it. Exactly. And, like it. and long as I love it, I'm cool with that. Yeah, as long as, yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. You know, my art, anything I create, like, and at this point, it feels even easier because I've been drawing my whole life. I'm 34, making music since I was, like, like recording since I was, like, 14, 15. So it's like... It's just so much easier now, and I have more information around it. It's just like a nice process. More tools you can use now, yeah. too. A lot of more things that you at oh, in front of you. I got all the tools now. Outlets is different now, yeah. too. Yeah, I think that's what is the biggest difference um, between, you know, with me and my art and music in the last 10 years is my resource has changed. So let me ask you this, because I want to talk about that. We sit in a location that's a resource. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you told me this, you know, when we talked prior, you said this was something that you were look. this is something you, this was your dream. Yeah, absolutely. It and we're sitting in your dream right now. Let's talk about the location that we're in, man. And mm -hmm. what took you to get to this? What drove you to this point without jumping off the train, the ride? Wow. I, I know it's been a ride. It's just part of the, it's part of the ride. You Thank know what I'm you. saying? It's part of the ride. Like, I just, I have to, you know, I do my own shows and I've done mad shit for free. Like, a lot of my shows, you know, I pay for them out of pocket, you know? And I feel like a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to put the money in. But I always say you got to pay to play, you know? And just doing all my events and whatnot and working for people and, taking jobs like oh yeah we're gonna pay you and, you know i don't do that anymore like i'll do everything up front now right and um but just that but that's the experience. learning curve that's that's the part of it. that's what got you the 10 year run to where we at today sitting here yeah so just doing all my like events and just working mm -hmm. and just being just networking opportunity just came to me and it was like well i see what you're doing do that here and do it bigger. So let's talk about here. Let's talk where, about for here for the culture that, that doesn't know. Why'd you name it the name you guys named it? Number one. Um, so Sesh House, cause it's like session. It's like you smoked, so you can smoke and okay. whatnot. And uh, it's gonna be like a co-working space, but event space, private event space. So if you wanna do like 
album releases. I'm going to do stoner movie nights. So we're going to get a big projector to put on the wall and you can come and watch movies and smoke and shit. Right, that's fine. Well, we've got a, stu a recording studio here. So I'm just going to make mad music. And I got the bars. We have, um, like, yeah, the food like food area. We're going to have, like, beer on tap. And the they like uh, gourmet coffee, so that's going to be all in here, too. Okay. And, um, and downstairs is going to be, like, the coffee shop where we are now. Right. And then upstairs is going to be, like... The know, playrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where just I expect there to be a lot going on all the time if we're not doing events. So photographers here, musicians here painters here i want to make it that environment where the creatives can come and we could just come go together and go crazy, crazy in it. go crazy if you if you put 10 painters and then 10 musicians in one room together and 10 photographers and 10 influencers you can come up with a whole fucking world of your own it's gonna be nuts it's gonna be nuts just like and the caliber of artists and creatives you know what i mean it's just so crazy now and um, I just see nothing but like amazing things coming out of here. And where's it located? We we in Kearney. What's the address? Uh, yeah. So people, some people say Kearney. Some people say Carney. I don't know. Uh, I don't know Kearney, what it, Carney. Yeah, I don't know what it is. So it's just throwing it out there for the people. Um, but yeah, it's on Midland Ave, and uh, it's just it's just a dope spot, man. I got some really dope creative. Shout out to Mr. Mustard. He did this piece behind us. Um, He's gonna be doing another one. This is like a fake collaboration with the background, but I'm not gonna call it too much. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's one of my favorite artists, um, and he's out of Jersey City. And um, he was in my art show last year, and I was actually in an art show with him like a year or two ago. And I'd always wanted to meet him, and I met his manager. Um, but then I just ended up linking with him, and he loves my music, yo. I was so happy. It's you gotta be a certain type of person to like fuck with my music. Cause as you can guess, like people didn't always understand it. You know, especially when I started getting into college and my consciousness changed and I started looking at things a little differently. And, you know, I put a pyramid on my CD and they were saying, oh, you Illuminati now. And I was like, no, it's in Africa. It was made by black people. So you also see that's the thing. That's the that's the thing we're talking about. Where people just see something, yeah, and don't know. They just caught up in what society's saying it is, but you as the artist, yeah, you know what you're doing. But you know what you know what I mean? You the, know the homework behind what you're doing. That's the funny part too, is that like I I know what it means, uh, but I don't always need people to understand it. You know, if they they might understand it later, and I like that. So like 10 years later, somebody went, yo, this guy was saying this when he was 20 years old. He was talking about this. How could he have known? Or we didn't even think like this. I like that. You know, it's kind of like, you know how like uh, you might get a bar like in like four years, you've been listening to a song like for years and you didn't hear this one bar because you didn't have the information for it. Or you didn't understand that one bar we're until four years later. Exactly. So it's like, it's like, I love that. Like, especially with, you know, if I drop some like extra wild stuff or because I like to ask questions in my music. So I ask questions to make people think or to give me an answer, you know, but um, I was really happy. Uh, I could, I can uh, connect with, with Mustard on that level with my music and, um, and yeah, man, just having him come here, bless the wall. He's going to do another one. I have all different type of civ art over here on this wall. Uh, I got Fat J, Jamo. I got uh, Marsha Art. I got my homegirl, Venus. I would love to come I have back so many so artists. Put yeah. back, you know what I mean? We Right now, we in construction in here. Yeah, yeah. See, so I just want everybody to understand that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is, uh, we will be back when it when it's up and everything's yeah. official. Yeah, they just, the counters are yeah. brand new. They're not even sanded. This, this is what you call from the ground up. Uh, it is. It is a project like that. The building got good bones. We put in all of this HVAC and all that stuff. Right. So. And it gives me that old school feel, too. I like that. That's mm -hmm. like that Soho look. That's mm -hmm. that down. This reminds me of the village area. Everyone's kind of putting that look now, that brick, that, you know, I forgot what the, the word is for it, but it's this place. That, is loft, like, that lofty look. Mm -hmm. This place, the whole idea behind it was kind of like street and bougie. 
So right. it has those connected. It has like the uh, silver ceilings and the you know uh, I don't know if you saw the lamp upstairs. It's like a the chandeliers. And yeah, stuff. You know? I like that. Yeah, like it, it brings a different element. Exactly. So we're combining that. That's why I got a bunch of street artists in here, and then I got like. So I'm putting up some fancy paintings and sculptures and stuff here. But you also got graffiti on the steps where they walking up. Yep. So I understand with the concept. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. You know, places like this give you a different energy. It gives you a different feel. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. When I walked in here, I felt a different energy. I'm going to yeah. keep that a buck. Right. You know, and I, me, I'm a spiritual dude. Mm. So energy is everything. Where? You know what I'm saying? 100%. So... You can walk in an environment like, you know what, excuse my language, I'm going to say, this is some nigga shit. Mm. This is some monkey shit, this is some clown shit. Mm. The energy is off. Even, yo, when I walked in here, I felt, mm. I felt creativity. Yeah. I felt love. Like, it's leave your problems at the door. Whatever you're dealing Absolutely. with is outside. When you come in here, yo, yeah. we, we free. I think that's the environment we've been building here. It's just like, we want the creatives to be here. We want to do dope shit. We want to make it a safe environment for everybody. We want to make it a loving environment for everybody. You know what I mean? And we just want to forward our creativity, you know, in any way that we can. So that's why we got all different channels for people to cre like create. And I can't wait to do my shows here. Like my open mics with that stage and that my, crowd and everything. Put yeah. Together. You know, that, that's a blessing because to be in here now and to see it. And I'm gonna keep it real, cause you know what I'm saying. We gonna we gonna keep it so funky for the coach. Yeah. It's dusty, it's muggy, <laughs> but yeah. it's also I I like it right. because it gives you that yo. You know what's coming. Yeah, you yeah. know yeah. where it's going. You know where it's leading to. So I'd right. rather be here when we put the seed mm. and watch it and watch the flower grow. Yeah, into it, this amazing root. You it know is what I'm that. It is that man. It's it's like it's this is the beginning. Literally all this stuff that you see is only in the last two months. I feel like I feel like when you I feel like you're happy. This is your happy space. It is. For some small reason, I get that feeling from you. Like nah, I definitely You know what I mean? You was excited when we walked in. Real talk, you was you was a little bit we, yeah. we was kicking it earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we got here, even you told you know oh my god, yo, make sure you get that sign. Like your excitement. Yeah, uh you know I do what I mean? love this place. I do love I, this and place. I and I, that's good because mm -hmm. it gives off that energy to everybody else who comes in here. It gives you right. that it gives you that okay. welcome, warm feeling of, yo, let's go be great in this motherfucker. Where? Where? You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And it's gonna be successful. You know what I mean? We're gonna Hell speak yeah. positively upon we're gonna we're gonna Hell manifest yeah. greatness upon this. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? It's definitely in the hands of God, you know what I mean? Because God is definitely I I know, you know what I mean, and understand what is what is it about. But I'm gonna throw some words at you before we get ready to wrap things up. And I just want okay. you to speak on those words, man. Okay. Um, one word, and I'm doing this off the freestyle. Okay. Because and I'm doing it, the words I'm using is just from what the energy I receive from you. All right. And the first word is gonna be love. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. That's what that's what that word identifies for you. Yeah, that's like. I think that's it'll love will always be true. That that is always like I guess that's the the truth inside of us is to be loving creatures. Like kids, little kids, like babies, they're mad loving. I respect that. The reason why I asked you that because that's the energy I see I see from you. Like mm -hmm. you love you like you always talk about doing things for free, doing my shows, mm -hmm. giving other individuals the spotlight, giving mm -hmm. everybody else the shine. That's oh, yeah. love. That's oh, yeah. showing love, that's presenting love, that's right. giving love, and you receive it by love comes back to you. Yeah, I feel like I when I, as soon as I do something for somebody else, I immediately, not that I get a gratification for it, but it's in a loving step. So naturally I'm just living in it. You're living you know, in love. I yeah, I don't do anything. For but it's life. also, it goes back to what you said. Mm -hmm. Now I understand why you use the word truth. Mm -hmm. Because that's your truth. That's yeah. who you are. Right. Anything you do, I'm doing it for the love. Right up. Right up. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I got another word for you, man. Longevity. Um, that's an interesting word. Um... I think that, you know, we're breathing the same air that like people 5,000 years ago were breathing. Like 
it's trapped in this atmosphere that we're in. And regardless if we have their tools or we have their art, you know, we still have their essence. So I think that when it comes to longevity or when I think about leaving my mark here, um, it's really about how I influence other people to influence other people, you know? So I think that is what longevity is to me. Okay. Okay. I got another one for you. And you've been dealing with this your whole life because you've been a musician, an artist, a carefree person. Stability. Illusion. Uh, why? Why you say illusion? Uh, because stability is still and flat. But I think of it like skateboard on a rail. Like you have to balance. It's not always going to be, you know, stable. Yeah. So you got to kind of go with the motions. Uh, just part of existing, you know, and you love and suffer. You know, you just got to keep going on the rail. Yeah. Okay. I got one more for you, man. And this one is going to be a little... It's going to be a curveball. That's it. Jada the artist. Mm. All right. Ja is, Ja's, well, Ja's my initials. Okay. And then the Z I threw, you know what's so funny? The first person that asked me what my name was, was AZ. I was doing, I did a, I engineered a session for him. Okay. And he was like, what's your name? And I was like, I was like, the Z is for zebra. I was joking. But then it made me think about how that name relates to me because I study Madhu Nature, which is um, like ancient. Let's like, talk about it a little bit. You study like hieroglyphics and stuff. Okay. So I, I read and write this. Um, and in it, everyone, you get multiple names as you grow. Okay. Right. And a lot of the people that pick their faith or like pick their, their name in there, it relates to their life or their life goals. Okay. So my teacher, I have her here. Um, her name is Agnes Ma'at, right? And that's a life in balance, a truth in balance, you know? And she embodies those principles. So I think that when I had this identity of this person, Jaws, right? Or Ja, when I started getting a nickname or I started feeling like I was creating a person, right? It was the embodiment of my insecurities, but also my strength, you know? So it was that duality, you know? So you brought those two together. To embody that principle. So I, even at the time, maybe when I had the name, um, I might have not embodied those principles like I do now. So the growth. Yeah, but now I'm like completely in there. You can tell with my art and music, this is my childhood, but if you met me in high school, you might not know I drew I drew anything. You wouldn't know. You know I make music. A lot of people in town know me because of music. It's the first thing they say, oh, yeah, he did music. I'm like, I never heard no music. Yeah, word. So, like, now that I'm bringing this to the forefront and my music to the forefront, it's like people know me for both. That's why I have the painting MC. So like, you know, I paint and I do hip hop. And you know, I, not only that, I don't consider myself a rapper. Exactly. I consider myself an MC. Right. So Why? I, an MC and not a rapper. Oh, cause KRS-One told me, he was just like, yo, you don't want to be a rapper. You want to be an MC. Move the crowd. Well, yeah, like. The microphone control. Yeah, he free, yo, I'll never forget. I was at the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival. It was like the second one they ever did. This is before Jay-Z went there and everybody like, and it was like the the river and the bridge and Karis one was the headliner. And he was just up there freestyling and talking to us, you know? And I met him in Englewood once or twice, real cool, real cool guy. Um, but yeah, like he broke it down for me and he said, yo, don't ever call yourself that other shit, basically. 
So from that day forth, you know, consider myself an MC. Or you got one of the greatest MC. all time MCs. You got one of the greatest MCs of all time telling you that too. Absolutely. So, so that right there within itself was a package. Yeah, it hit. That wasn't even a jewel. That was a package. Where it was it that was. carried you. It was. That's that's staying with you forever because it is. When you express that, you always gonna hey, this is who I am. I'm not that. And then other individuals are like, well, why not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because everybody. It's cool to be a rapper. No one says, yo, I'm an MC. No one uses that no more. Nobody says that. No one says I'm an MC. Yeah. My era, yeah. it was, oh, I'm an MC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm an MC. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm a, now that I'm a rapper. Where? And I feel like that comes with society and, and, and just the individuals in time, growth, and yeah. society. Yeah. Social media we live in. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Getting caught up in, 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 in the fads and what's cool and what's hot. Word. You know what I'm saying? So as you continue to grow in both of your, I'm not calling them careers. Yeah. I'm going to call them your lifestyle because this is your lifestyle. Absolutely. This is not a career. This is not a job. This is not, this is your, this is your life. Yeah. I don't. Style. It don't, I don't get the weekends off. Right. You, you working to. 390 days a year. Absolutely. It's only 365. Absolutely. Mentally, spiritually, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yo, where you, five years from now, where you at? Ooh, five year question. I got to throw that in, man. Because you, you gave me the 10 year early. You snuck yeah, that in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to make it a little shorter. I like this. Okay. It's five years. Man. A lot of thoughts. But um, give us your top three Damn. for yourself. All right. I'm going to get the cosign that I want. Okay. And, you know, I never really strive for a cosign, but I do think a cosign now at my level would just be icing on the cake. Cosigning with direction. You mean, I, want, I, want, oh, I want the people I to want, understand. I want the, I want the... I want the hip hop cosign and I want the art cosign. Okay. And I can have, funny part is, I have hip hop artists in mind that could do both. Okay. So, but I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I get that cosign and I have like a place that, a, a studio that is separate for my art and music. Other than this place, like I'm gonna use this place to do event and really curate others and have others come here and create stuff, but um, I'm not gonna section off a, a spot for myself here. You know, don't want to do that. I want to have it for everybody. Okay. But I, I want. I'm gonna have my own studio slash like recording studio, art studio, and I was. You know, what's so funny. I usually I want to say, oh, and I'm happy or stuff, but like I'm happy now. You know, like I'm good now. And so that's, I hope that carries on. No, that will carry on. Let's yeah, not use the word hope. Word, I like hope, hope keep you stagnated. I agree. So you know I'll say? say I'll continue to be happy. Stay in your happy space. Stay in my happy space. Cause like, I feel like I've separated from all the things that made me unhappy. Mm. So now there's only thing, you know, doing things that I enjoy. And hopefully I can bring joy to other people. Not hopefully. I will. You have. Because look at the space that you're creating for the people. Right, yeah. So it's not really a hope. Because if it was a hope, you wouldn't be sitting in the Sess house right uh, now. We wouldn't be talking. Hell yeah. You're creating a location mm. to bring more greatness that brings more joy to you. And that's your safe place. You know what I'm saying? And I Word. commend you for that. Where it is. It is a it is a safe place for me. I really I salute you for that. Yeah. Before we get out of here, man, anything you want the culture to know about, man? Let them know what's up and coming, what's yeah. coming, what's, what's, what we got, what, what's in the, what's brewing, what's cooking. You ain't got to give no secrets away, but just give the coaches some things that you may want them to know, where they can find you, where they can get in contact, if they need any work done. Just, okay. You know what I mean? So I have a website. It's called thejawsshop.com, and you can see all my art there. You can request art, commissions, and stuff like that, and then you can see all my music on okay. as well. And I just put out a song called Incendio, 
which is uh, a word that I got from this game, this Harry Potter game called um, Hogwarts Legacy. And in it, there's a move called Incendio. It's like a fire blast or whatever. Okay. So I use it as a metaphor for me spinning that fire. You know, Yo, but, everything, uh, everything you do, it, it's a reason, but it's, it's a very, it's a very, uh, spiritual song. Okay. I think mostly. And, uh, me and Mr. Mustard did the cover art for that. So, um, go check that out. And, um, and I start my events here in April. So I'm doing my open mics. I'm doing puff and paints, I'm doing stoner movie night. I'm gonna do a comedy show. It's like mad stuff. So if you're creative, just hit me up, you know. And I got tell them where to find you at, man. Uh, so they can't hit you up, you know. On what I mean? Instagram at the Jaws, the T H E J A H Z, and you can find me there everywhere. Brother, yeah. it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Thank you. I thank you for the opportunity, man. You Appreciate got a great you. space, man. Thank you. And listen, man, let me know when this thing opens so we can come back. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I want to be a part of the grand. I really, please hit me. I want to be a part of the grand opening. I got you. Yeah, we're going to do a grand. I know uh, it's, it's a live party. Just to be able to sit in here now and see the dust and then wipe the <laughs> dust off and see this thing yeah. come to life. Yo, yeah. I mean, I love shit like that. King, yeah. Yeah. thank you for being great, man. Thank you for the Appreciate opportunity, you, man. Thank Yo, you. you know what it is, man. It's the Round Table Podcast. With my man, we in the Sus House. Yes. We in Kearney. Give him the address again, man. Yo, Midland Ave, Kearney, New Jersey. Pull up. Pull up. We here. You know what it is? The voice of the culture. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Love is love. Peace. King. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>